Ah, much better. Today's video is all about T accounts. I'm gonna explain what they mean, how they're used, and what this is all about. Hey, it's James here, back with another episode of Accounting Stuff. Today's video is the third in a series that I'm creating on accounting basics. If you're new to the channel, then welcome. Don't forget to hit that big subscribe button below and click that little bell so that you don't miss a thing. In this video, things are about to get real. We're gonna dive deep into T accounts, which are a super useful way to help you visualize what accounts are and to keep a track of all of those debits and credits we talked about last week. Don't forget to watch this one through to the end because I'm gonna run you through a whole bunch of useful examples. Now, who's ready for some T accounting goodness? Let's do this. To kick things off, I would like to lay out the definitions of some important terms that will crop up throughout this video. First, what is an account? An account is a place where we can record, sort and store all transactions that affect a related group of items. A T account is a visual representation of an account. It is called a T account simply because it looks like a T and it looks like a T so that we can easily distinguish between all of the debits and credits that impact it. If you're unsure what debits and credits are, you might need to pause at this point and watch the video that I posted last week. You'll find a link to it in the description below. Finally, what is the general ledger? It's a place where a business stores a complete record of all of its financial transactions and accounts. Now that I've clarified these terms, let's get back to T accounts. In its most simple form, a T account looks like this. Debits go on the left, credits go on the right. If you are having a hard time remembering the sides, you can add a little DR and CR to the top of the T account. DR and CR are how we accountants write debits and credits in shorthand. Last week I taught you a simple way to remember which accounts are debits and credits. Dealer. D-E-A-L-E-R. Dealer. Dividends, expenses and assets go on the left. These increase when debited and decrease when credited. Whereas liabilities, owner's equity paid in and revenue go on the right. These increase when credited and decrease when debited. Now we will run through a quick example to illustrate this. Let's say your business has a cash account with $100 in it. That's your opening balance. You take out $40 to pay a bill and then you decide to take out $25 more to buy some new supplies. So you are left with $35 in the account, which we will call your closing balance. Balance, by the way, is another way of saying total at a point in time. So here your opening balance means your total cash at the beginning and your closing balance means your total cash at the end. Typically, when you are doing a calculation, you might choose to lay it out like we have done here. However, when you are using T accounts, you would show it like this. Cash is an asset, that's the A in dealer. So debits increase it and credits decrease it. Like I said before, debits are on the left and credits are on the right. The final balance is still $35. It is a different way to present the exact same information. The benefit being that it is easy to distinguish between all of the different debits and credits. In this case, your closing balance goes on the left hand side because it happens to be bigger than zero. However, if your supplies had instead cost $65, then you would be left with negative cash or an overdraft of $5. So your closing balance would go on the right hand side instead. Now you might be thinking, why is all this necessary? I can already tell from that little calc that I did there. Well, this is a simple example for demonstration purposes. In reality, T accounts are way bigger than this. Splitting out debits and credits allows us to spot things quickly in the general ledger. If you're new to accounting, it can be helpful to jot down T accounts as you're working through a problem to help you visualize this all in your head. Eventually, you might not need to do this anymore because your brain can just naturally process this, but it takes a bit of practice to get there. Okay, so now I have another term for you and we touched on this one last week. Double entry bookkeeping. This means that every accounting entry has an opposite corresponding entry in a different account. In the context of T accounts, this means that to record a transaction, you will need to write down both sides of it in at least two T accounts. 
You might want to pause the video now and grab a tea or a coffee or something to get in the zone for this next bit because I'm about to take you through some examples of double entry bookkeeping with tea accounts. Mm. Okay, let's get to it. Now you might be wondering why I was cleaning those windows at the start of this video. Well, I've recently started my own window cleaning business. I'm going to take you through some of those transactions that took place in the first month of operation. First of all, I, the business owner, invested $100 of my own money into this window cleaning business. And in return, the business issued me $100 in stock. Then, the business decided to take out a further $200 loan from the bank to fund its activities. Soon after receiving the bank loan, the business spent $30 in cash on window cleaning equipment. Next, it spent a further $50 on cleaning supplies. The supplier offers 30 day terms so the payment was made on account. Finally, the business gets its first client and makes $150 cleaning their windows. But in doing so, it uses half of its cleaning supplies. The first transaction affects two accounts, cash and stock. So we will need T accounts for both of these categories. Cash is an asset. Like I mentioned earlier, it's the A in dealer. So debits increase it. I therefore need to put $100 on the left hand side of the cash T account since debits always go on the left. Stock is a form of equity which represents the second E in dealer. So credits increase it. Credits always go on the right, so we will need to put $100 on the right hand side of our new stock T account. Moving on, in the second transaction, a business takes out a $200 loan from the bank to fund its activities. This transaction affects cash and loans payable, which both need to increase by $200. We already have a cash T account, so now we'll be needing another one for loans payable. The cash part here is straightforward since we've done this already. We need to debit cash a further $200. Loans payable is a form of liability, the L in dealer, so credits increase it. The $200 increase in our loans payable is recorded in our T account by adding it to the right hand side. In transaction number three, the business spends $30 of its cash on window cleaning equipment. So we need to credit cash by $30 to decrease it and debit our new equipment T account by $30. We record the credit to cash by adding $30 to the right hand side of the cash T account since credits always go on the right. Equipment is another form of asset, so the debit to the equipment goes on the left hand side. Next, our business spends a further $50 on cleaning supplies which it pays for on account. Paying for something on account means that you agree to pay the supplier at a later date. So for now, you need to hold on to that cash, but you need to recognize a liability since you owe the supplier for the goods they sold you. Supplies are a form of asset, so we need to create a new T account for supplies and debit the left hand side of it by $50. We owe $50 to the supplier, so we need another T account for accounts payable. Accounts payable is a liability, the L in dealer. So we need to credit the right hand side of the T account by $50. Is your head hurting yet? We only have one transaction to go, so it'll all be over soon. In our last transaction, the business gets its first client and makes $150 cleaning their windows, using half of its supplies in the process. This one is a bit more tricky because there are two sides to it, but don't worry, we'll work through it together. First, we need to recognize our revenue. We made $150 cleaning the client's windows, so revenue needs to go up by $150 and so does our cash. Revenue is the R in dealer, so credits increase it. We need to make a new revenue T account and credit it by $150 on the right hand side. The cash we have made is recorded as a $150 debit to the left hand side of the cash T account. Now, there's one more thing we need to take note of and then our work is done. We said half of our cleaning supplies were used up on this job, so we can't recognize them as an asset anymore. They now make up our cost of sales, which is a type of expense. Expense is the first E in dealer, so debits increase it. In our fourth transaction, we spent $50 on supplies. So if we have used half, 
then we need to credit supplies by $25 to decrease them and debit our brand new cost of sales tier account by $25 to increase it. There we have it, our first month of transactions all laid out visually in front of us in tier accounts with debits on the left and credits on the right. So there you have it, an account is a place where we can record, sort and store all financial transactions. A T account is a graphical representation of an account. The general ledger is a place where a business stores a complete record of all of its financial transactions and accounts. Debits on the left, credits on the right. And finally, double entry bookkeeping means that every financial transaction affects at least two accounts. Question of the day, do you find T accounts useful? If you're an accountant or bookkeeper, do you use these day to day? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's video, please press like, it really makes a difference. And don't forget to subscribe, I would love for you to come and join us. See you in the next video, good luck with those T accounts and have a great week.